have created a much, much safer world. Congratulations, give yourselves a round of applause. This is not easy. This is not easy, but you've done a terrific job. And now I'm going to no longer be the Secretary General. There's still a, a few things that I'd like to talk with you about now that I can be me again. Uh, so the first thing is, yeah, get rid of the jacket too. Whew. All right, much better. The first thing is, I'd really like you to reflect a little bit on how you feel. And th to do that, I'm going to ask you now to take a full minute of silence and just reflect on what you experienced and how do you feel. Not what do you think, how do you feel. So one minute. OK. A minute is a long time. So how do you feel? So you wish you could have done more collectively? I would like real, not to like, I mean realistic. Oh, in the real world. <laughs> Frustrated that we haven't done as many of these things as we seem to need to do in the real world. So how many would share that feeling of frustration about the slow pace of action in the real world? OK. Other thoughts, other feelings? Yeah, please. You actually feel hopeful that it can be done. Yeah, and why is that? Um, well, I think it seems that we weren't going to extreme measures in any one bar. Like, at the end, we didn't end up relying on new technology. We didn't end up pushing like taxes on like, oil or anything to extreme measures. And yet, we managed to get the temperature to a reasonable level. Yeah, we're under two degrees. Uh, with policies that don't require any technical miracles. We hope for miracles, but hope that kind of hope is not a strategy. All stuff that's available with technologies that are here and now today, they'll continue to get better. There's good reason for, to believe that. Uh, and, and, and so you're feeling more hopeful. That's terrific. How many would share that feeling? Not as many, but a fair number. Good. Who's more discouraged now than before? Yeah, go ahead. Tell us. Scared of the power that a few very wealthy countries, companies, yeah, have right now to block action. It was very interesting for me. By the way, you know, we are still experimenting with how to run this negotiation, and the blocking action is a relatively new addition to the way we, we do this. And there was a lot of blocking that went on. I think it's pretty realistic, blocking the high carbon price, uh, undoing some of the heavy subsidies because they're too expensive, et cetera. That's very much real. Uh, and it is frustrating. And you're less hopeful. Are you scared? I mean, I really, you know, at MIT, if you ask people, tell me how you feel, They'll tell you what they think. And that's part of the MIT culture, and part of that is great. But part of it is a problem. So I'm really looking for what's, what's in here, what's in your heart and your gut, not just what's up here. So scared? Yeah. How many share that fear for the future? Yeah. That's important. That's an important feeling to notice. Any other feelings people would like to share? Um, so I'm coming from conventional energy sector. Um, because like as we can see, um, the demand on coal and oil gas is reducing as electrification of uh, transport and buildings and industry is getting better. Um, so coming from this sector, like I'm in the dilemma of choosing of my profit because I know coal, coal fossil fuels, they are making a lot of money for me. But at the same time, uh, if I want to uh, think for everyone here, uh, for human beings, I have to change. Um, from business point of view, I have to pivot, uh, or like I have to tweak my business have model to, a lot to right. focus more on electrification. Right. So, yeah. So this is a fantastic comment. Thank you very much. And you know, I got to tell you, being at the Sloan School, I interact a lot with senior executives and political leaders and so forth, and. In organization after organization, whether it's you know, a new 
employee at a, at a startup or an established company, middle management, senior leadership, CEOs, boards of directors, elected officials. What I hear very often, not usually in public, but I hear it very often in a quiet moment, is you know, including from people in the conventional fossil fuel industry. They say, listen, I know that climate change is real and it poses a grave risk to our prosperity and our health and even our lives. I know that, I believe it. They sometimes will say, and I don't want my bosses to hear me say this, but I know it's real and happening no matter what the senior leadership of my company says. And I hate that because I need to be successful in my career. I need to pay my mortgage. I need to save enough to put my kids through college. But I hate that I'm doing that in a way that's destroying their future. And what they want more than anything, I'm not saying everybody, but a lot of the people that I interact with, if you really have that opportunity to meet them as people, not what do you think, but what do you feel, what they say is, I'm desperate to find a way to build a career that lets me work towards a solution instead of making things worse. And I think that's so interesting. And that's what you articulated so beautifully just a minute ago.